Okay. So in this talk, I'm going to go over the definition of group from a constructor purpose, which is suppose you're given a set and a binary operation. How do you determine whether that's actually a group? Okay. Now, the first step in determining that is first you have to make sure that the set and the binary operation are clearly defined. Okay. So you have to make sure you, you know what the set you're working with is and you have to make sure you know what the binary operation is and that it makes sense. Now, when I say it makes sense, you have to check closure, okay, if it's not already obvious. Okay, so this actually includes checking closure. Yep. Okay, it includes checking it's well-defined, which means includes checking it's uh, closure. So if your set is G, okay, then the, you're basically checking that the binary operation takes two inputs from G and whenever it takes two inputs from G, it always gives an output, which is in G. Okay. Uh, now, verify associativity. First of all, what does associativity say? What's the associative law say? It says A star B star C. So by the way, if it's already a group, you generally omit the star and just write A, B, C and things like mm -hmm. that, right? But right now we don't yet know it's a group, so I'm actually using star. Okay, because just if you have a general binary operation, it's better to write the symbol for it. Uh, a star, B star C. And where is this true? For all A, B, C in the group, right? In the set which you're trying to make into a group, which you're trying to check is a group, right? Yeah. Okay, now how do you verify associativity? Well, if it's a finite set, then you can just check on every triple of elements, right? Mm -hmm. So if your set has size 10, how many uh, things do you need to check? Uh, 720. Why 720? No, they could be equal, right? Uh, okay. Well, that's 10, 10 cube. Yeah, 1000. Mm -hmm. Right? You have to check 1000. Uh, well, you actually have to, do, have to check a thousand equalities like this and for each equality you have to do four multiplications right you have to first do this multiplication then this then you do this and then this and then check equality so you have to do some four thousand multiplications okay maybe you can shorten the procedure a bit by seeing that some of them are redundant but it's a lot of work but still if the set is finite you need to do a finite number of checking checking right and then you've shown associativity now if your set is infinite then you obviously cannot check everything so there's there's another way you tackle this kind of thing without checking all cases. What's that? Well, if your binary operation is given using some kind of algebraic formula, hmm, then you just uh, take generic variables here and try to just algebraically simplify both sides and see if they turn out to be equal. You understand what I'm saying? So if your binary operation is given by some formula, uh, which is just has some algebraic expressions, you just simplify this algebraic expression, you simplify this algebraic expression, if they come out to be identically equal as algebraic expressions, that means they're equal for all inputs, so it's associated. Okay, now similarly, we have to verify the identity axiom, but now if the identity element is not already given to us, we have to find it first and then verify that it works. How do you find the identity element? Well, let me first recall what's the identity element it's E, then you you need a condition like uh well, I'll just a star e equals to b star e to I didn't I didn't name the set, but if the set is G then this should be G and this should be G. Yeah. Okay. So so good. Now how do you find the identity element? Now, if it's already known known what the identity element should be, or if somebody's already specified, check whether it's a group with this identity element, you just need to check this condition, right? And again, you can check it for all A and G separately, or you can do the algebraic thing. But if you don't know what the identity element is supposed to be, what do you do? Well, you try to solve this, right? So you, let's say you just try to solve A star E as A, okay? If it's an algebraic expression, then you just simplify the algebraic expression for A star E, equate it to the algebraic expression for A, and solve it, assuming it is an identity in A. So you're trying to solve this equation A star E equals A, 
or he was trying to solve this equation, E star A equals A, as an identity in A and solving for E. Do you know what I mean? When I say as an identity in A, I mean that it's the, you have to find an E such that this is true for all A. Right. Okay. And then find and verify inverses. Well, again, you inverse has to satisfy what? So it has to satisfy A star A inverse equals A inverse star A equals E for all A and G. Right? Now, again, you can do it algebraically if there's an algebraic expression. You, you already know what E is from the previous thing. So you're trying to solve A star A inverse equals E and you try to manipulate that and get an algebraic expression for A inverse in terms of A. Okay? Hmm? Yeah. Now, note that both of these are two-sided conditions. So you actually, if you, once you solve it and get an expression, you have to actually check that that expression satisfies the identity condition on both sides. Similarly, once you get an expression for the inverse, you have to actually check that it satisfies the condition for both sides. Okay? Okay, and so and so and so, you, it's not just enough to solve one side equation. You have to check that it it satisfies both sides. Okay. Now there are some special cases where there are shortcuts available. Okay. So one is when the binary operation is commutative. So in that case, what happens when the binary operation is commutative? Well, in that case, these two sided conditions you just have to check them one sided. Okay. Hmm? Yes. Yeah. So if you have observed or if you have shown the binary operation is commutative, then then you just have to sort of solve one of these conditions. So the identity element and inverse conditions just need to be checked one sided. But you still have to check associativity as a general thing, right? There's no saving on that. Uh, then subset of a group, proving that a subset of a group is a sub. So suppose, suppose I have my set G is living inside some big set, which is already known to be a group. Okay. Hmm? Mm -hmm. And G has the same binary operation as that big set. Okay, and I just want to prove that G is now a group under this binary operation, which is the same as trying to prove that G is a subgroup of that big group. Right? Mm -hmm. So, in that case, so let's say the big group is K. So, G is a subset of K. You're trying to define the same binary operation on G, and we want to prove that G is a subgroup of K. Now, if you remember the equivalent definition of subgroup, you'll notice that the identity element and inverse map have to be the same in the subgroup as in the whole group, right? Mm -hmm. So, you, first of all, you don't have to check associativity, right? Because associativity is true in the big thing for all A, B, C in the big group K. It will also be true in the small room, right? Mm -hmm. But you do have to check closure. So you have to check that the set is closed under the operation from the big group. You don't have to check associativity. Why? Because it's true in the big thing. It's still true in the small thing. You have to check identity and inverses. But here again, there's a saving. Because we already know that if the identity exists for G, it has to be the same as the identity for for what? For subgroups. No, I mean, if the identity exists for G, G is a subgroup subset we are trying to make a group. K is the big group. Okay. So if you're saying if an identity for G exists, then it has to be equal to the identity for K. Mm -hmm. So you already have the candidate for the identity of K, which should be the identity of G. So you only have to check that the identity of K is in G. Maybe I'll write it separate. It's confusing. Okay. So we have to check 
closure. We already know what the identity should be if it exists. So we just check that the identity of k is in g, right? Instead of trying to find an identity for g, just check that the identity of k is in g. And what else do we need to check? Hmm? The inverse map. So check that the inverse map of k sends g to itself. Okay, so, so, so we don't have to check associativity. We don't have to find the identity and the inverse. We already know what this should be. We just have to check that the, that the subset is actually closed down to those operations. Okay, this is from the equivalence of the definitions of subgroup. Finally, the third one is a little tricky. So I'll just briefly mention it. You'll see it sometime later. Is that suppose I have a group and and I have an equivalence relation. So suppose there's a group K. And there's an equivalence relation. Tilde on K. Okay. And G is defined as K mod the equivalence relation. You know what this notation means? No. No. So it's just a set of equivalence classes. So you remember an equivalence relation on your set K, the set K, so group's actually a group, but it just think of it as a set. An equivalence relation has equivalence classes, right? The set of equivalence classes is denoted G. So each element of G is an equivalence class. Okay, so this is one element of G, this is another element of G. Each of these are elements of G. And now we are trying to say we define the multiplication in G just as multiplication in K. So if I want to multiply these two equivalence classes, I take any element here, any element here, multiply them, it comes here. So the product of these classes is this class. Okay, so I just pick representatives, multiply. Now, the actually in this case, the only thing you need to check is that this uh, relation preserves multiplication. So the only thing you need to check to make G a group is is what? We want to check that this operation is well defined. So if I pick different representatives, I still land in the same class. Well, so what do I need to check? Closure. Yeah, I mean it's, it's a form of checking or rather well definedness, but what do I need? So I need to check that if A is equivalent to B and C is equivalent to G, B, then what? A, B is equal to A, C. So this is actually a pretty far advanced thing we'll see later. But I just want to mention it because if you're reviewing this and you want to see all of these together. Okay.